my name is Alexis. I'm 19 and I'm a new mommy. I will be a mommy for one whole month tomorrow. I had my little boy on June 22nd and I'm going to talk with you about my experience on the baby blues. I feel like this is a topic that not many people talk about. It's something that's pretty easy to forget about actually once you're past it. While you're in it, it's terrible, but once you're past it, it's pretty easy to forget about it. It's something also some women may feel embarrassed or guilty about and they just don't want to share it. So this is just to let you know that you're not alone and what you're feeling is okay and to tell you a little bit about what I went through with the baby blues. So the baby blues is similar but different to postpartum depression. Postpartum depression is more intense and it will usually last longer than a month. You can get postpartum depression even after the first month of your baby's life. A lot of people think you can only get it like the first week to the first month and then you have it. But no, you can get it like six months out even. Um, I wanna say a year, I'm not completely positive. And the baby blues is less intense. It usually happens day four to five is when it usually hits the hardest. Um, days four to five of your baby's life is when it will usually hit you the hardest and it will usually diminish by itself and go away within the first two weeks of your baby's life. So the baby blues hit me on day four of my baby's life. How convenient, literally exactly what the internet told me. The first two days of baby's life, I was of course in baby bliss. And um, it hit me the first day I was home alone with the baby. I wasn't home alone alone because I do live with family that's always here, but I, I was essentially alone. And we stayed two days in the hospital and then we had about half a day home. Then we had one full day home and then his dad went back to work that Monday. He was born on a Thursday. And so I was completely fine that morning. And that day I was cleaning, the baby was sleeping. I thought I had this mom thing down. I was being productive. I wasn't tired. Life was great. Everything was just great. And um, then that evening when Gio, my fiance and the baby's dad came home, he was playing video games and the baby was sleeping, I'm sure. I don't really remember, but I think he was. And I just started feeling really anxious. So, so anxious. And I had anxiety from about the fourth grade to the 10th grade. Um, and I also did have depression from about sixth grade to maybe the 10th grade. Um, but my anxiety, I'm not really sure what triggered that, but my depression wasn't like clinical depression or anything. It was from events that have happened in my life. And so those were resolved. I had a therapist, I got over it. And <laughs> baby's hungry, he's crying. He's, he's been napping for a while now, so I'm sure he's hungry. Are you hungry, baby? After sophomore year though, 10th grade, I only had the normal bouts of uh, anxiety that normal every people, everyday people get. And every now and then I would have like a month or a couple weeks where I would just feel very depressed, but it was nothing like before. And so I wasn't worried about giving it after or experiencing the baby blues or anything after birth because you always think not me. But I just felt so anxious and I told him, I told Gio, and I couldn't explain why and I was so anxious I was shaking. And that night in bed I couldn't sleep and I was just shaking the whole entire night because I was so, so anxious. I miss life without a baby. Um, I'm a homebody so it's not like I went out all of the time or something before baby. But it was just the simple things like being able to lay in bed, um, being able to sleep in, being able to do things without a baby interrupting you and crying all of the time and just being alone and doing you and having no interruptions and basically just being able to do things that are a lot easier to do without the baby because simple things become a lot harder when you have a baby and then at the same moment i would be thinking about how i miss life without a baby and then i would cry because i'm so in love with my baby or I would cry because I missed being pregnant, or I would cry because thinking about life without him was absolutely terrible. So it was very confusing. It's very confusing because 
you were like, I just had a baby. I should be so happy, so in love. And you can feel kind of guilty or alone or like a bad mom for having less than happy thoughts and feelings. It's also confusing because I would feel kind of low, less than happy, and then the next moment I would cry because he's my world. So that didn't make any of it any easier. I started to miss time with my partner. Um, babies do affect your relationship. And I started missing the time that I had with him. I had no time with him anymore because nearly every single day of the first week of baby's life, we had an appointment for him or for me. And so we would be, I'd have to wake up early, be out all day, and then I'd come home, spend time with my family. Gio would come home and then the baby would cry all evening. He does have his witching hour, which is a time in the evening when babies tend to be a little bit more fussy. Not all the time, but he definitely does have those days. And he wouldn't cry the whole time, but he'd be like almost asleep and then he'd wake up. So that was just really frustrating because Gio was finally home and all evening I'm tending to the baby, which of course I'm his mom, that's what I have to do. I always felt like I was just waiting for the baby to cry. I felt so anxious and overwhelmed because I felt like I couldn't do anything because the baby was gonna cry, so I just have to sit there and stare at him until he needs me. And when Gio would try to spend time with me, I just couldn't relax. We would lay down together and I was just waiting for the baby to cry and the baby would start crying. So it's like every time I tried to do something, the baby would cry and it was just very frustrating and overwhelming. I had no appetite. I did not want to eat, but I had to force myself to make sure I was eating and drinking water, especially since I'm breastfeeding and it it was not a good feeling to be so anxious to the point where you can't eat. I kind of had a mini crisis where I started questioning the career that I want to do. I started thinking about retirement plans. I started freaking out because we have to provide for him for his whole life. Okay, he's slowly waking up. He can't decide if he's awake or asleep yet, but I have his bib ready when he's ready to eat. I was freaking out that like I have to do all this right now. Um, because we have no time, but in all reality, I'm 19. Of course we have to do this because we want to be successful and provide for our son, but we do have time. I started stressing out about going to school in the fall because I am going to return to college and I was stressing out about having to do that with the baby. How was I going to do it? How was I going to deal with it? And I, I would be like, oh my God, he is mine. He's always going to be here. He's never going to leave. He will never be Gio and I again and like we'll always have a person around and he's never going away and <laughs> i have to take care of him for the rest of his life because it's not till they're 18 it's for the rest of their life so what helped me and these are also kind of tips for you if you're experiencing this is the first thing that i did is i acknowledged it i acknowledged that it was okay that it's normal and not to beat myself up so much about it and I talked about it. I'm someone who, I used to bottle things up, but I have to talk about it now. I have to talk about it. It makes me feel so much better and it really gets a lot off of my chest and my shoulders. So I talked to Gio about it. I talked to friends about it. I talked to my grandma about it. I was honest on those surveys they give you after you had the baby asking about how you're feeling. And I reached out to a lot of mommy friends who've had babies and asked them about it. And literally every single one that I asked has experienced this in one way or another, one intensity to another. Um, they've experienced this to some extent. And not everyone will, but the ones I happened to reach out to did. And talking about it just made me feel so much better. I also looked up YouTube videos about it because it is so easy to feel like you're alone and you're a bad mom and guilty. The second thing I did, which is what my friend recommended to me to do, is to get out. And I'm a homebody. So I went out with her, we got his newborn pictures done, and then we went to McDonald's and just McDonald's. And that little trip made a world of difference for me. He was only five days old then. And then Gio and I, we went for a walk go for walks, get out. And then when baby was one week old, although reluctantly, 
I knew what was best for me. I let my grandma watch him and I went out with Gio and we ate. Then we went a little bit grocery shopping for things we needed and it made the, the world of difference. I didn't want to go because I don't know, it's just really easy to feel like you're a bad mom for leaving your baby and that you should always be with your baby and you should always do everything for your baby. And people are gonna think you're a bad mom even if they ask you to help. Like if someone asked me like, oh, do you want me to do this? I feel like they're going to be judging me thinking that I'm a bad mom because I let them do it or something. And I never thought I'd be that way, but I was thinking these things. So the second, the third thing is to let your family help you let your friends help you if they offer i know how easy it is to like you want to do it it's your baby um it's your responsibility but let them help you the next thing or the fourth thing is to sleep while the baby sleeps or sleep while you can i know it's easier said than done i did not nap at all the first week of the baby's life i don't think um and i got no sleep in the hospital um, because he was cluster feeding and if I put him down he cried and I couldn't sleep with him there in the bed and we co sleep here but in the hospital you're not allowed to and so sleep sleep every chance you get if your grandma or your mom or your mother-in-law ask if you want her to take the baby well you can get some sleep say yes say yes I was so sleep deprived I didn't even realize how sleep deprived I was um, but now looking back on it, I was very sleep deprived. I barely slept in the hospital. I barely slept the night before he was born. I barely slept, the, I didn't sleep the whole time. I was like laboring and stuff. And I probably slept a total of six hours in the hospital from our two days that we were there. And then we had appointments nearly every single day of the first week of his life. And so we'd have to wake, I'd be up all night feeding him and taking care of him. And then I'd have to wake up early and then go to his appointment and then by the time I came home, I just felt like I would just sit on the couch with my family because I wanted to be around people. Um, so that's an, that's another thing. Surround yourself with people. Although if you don't want to be, don't be alone. Um, being around people really helped me a ton. And I'm someone who likes to stick in my room a lot. And yeah, I barely had any sleep. And just looking at him sleep or my grandma would be rocking him and she'd get sleepy. Looking at them being sleepy would make me want to fall asleep. I was so, so tired. It's completely normal to have these feelings. Your body is changing so much after you give birth. You just birthed a human. You just had a human come out of you. It's a lot of change on you mentally, um, emotionally, physically, and your, hor your hormones will be all over the place. And especially if you're breastfeeding, your hormones can be even crazier and you will be sleep deprived. You may or may not be eating correctly. You're getting used to a little human demanding everything from you 24 seven, seven days a week, forever and always. And it can be a lot to take in. It can be overwhelming. It's not easy, but it is so, so worth it. Know that it does get better know that you're not alone i got over it once it was one week so it was only a couple days that i experienced this but it was the longest couple days of my life because it felt so 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 terrible your body is just going through so much change after that it's so normal to feel these things no you're not a bad mom for it he slept through the night last night for the first time the nights got easier pretty quickly probably about one and a half to two weeks old he had a consistent schedule of the times he would wake up at night and i started a bedtime routine with him and you start to learn your baby you start to learn what they need when they're crying why they're why they're crying what to do um when they're tired when they're hungry and you will still have those days where you just cry because they won't stop crying but it they're they are so worth it because he's my absolute world and as hard as all of this is you best believe i want another i hope this video helped you in one way or another i'm not sure that i really was able to express and explain everything as i would have liked 
but I hope that at least this helped you in one way or another. Don't forget to subscribe and like and comment on the video. I do have an Instagram for this YouTube channel. It's the same as my YouTube name. I post pictures of baby and such on there and I will see you in my next video. Bye and remember, you got this.